Okay. Hey, so my name's, uh, and okay, clear that. I'm trying to time myself so I keep on at a time. I'm gonna just talk and go with it. So my name's Carney, I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm a designer, and I'd like to share a sneak peek of my graduate thesis project uh, for the Information Visualization Program at the uh, Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore. I'm uh, presenting this in a couple weeks, putting the finishing touches on this. I'm sending it to the printers on Sunday. Uh, hopefully I'll get everything done in time. Um, okay, so let's dive in. Um, so Fugazi was a band from Washington, D.C., who uh, late 80s to early 2000s played over a thousand shows, uh, fiercely independent DIY, uh, only ever played all ages shows, played a lot of free shows outdoors, protest shows, benefit shows, was always trying to raise awareness for uh, causes they believed in, and uh, also uh, put on incredible live performances that were really transformative for those who attended. I got, uh, luckily enough, I got to see them when I was 17 years old. They played uh, the last show in D.C. in 2002. Um, and they also recorded 800 of their live shows. They documented everything. And they put up this uh, website, a live series of, you know, lists of every show they ever, ever played. And there's detail pages for every single show, which has door price, how many people attended, where the show was, what bands they played with, if it, was, if it was a benefit show, who the beneficiary was. So I looked at this and I was like, this is an amazing data set. So I scraped all the data out of this website and decided to turn it into a project. One little tidbit on this site that I actually love, it's you know you can buy any of these uh, downloads for $5, or if you want, you can, if you have a different price in mind, click here. Um, and then, um, oh, I, I removed those slides for time. But basically, what it has is, it, in order to uh, uh, pay what you want, you have to, there's a little field, and you have to enter 40 characters or more to then put your suggested price of, oh, I wanna, only want to pay a dollar. So it's like a nice subtle nudge to, why are you entitled to pay less for this? Explain it to me, and then you can get your cheap download. Anyway, so I got the opportunity to actually uh, meet some of the people from the band and talk to them about this project. Uh, they also, uh, Ian Mackay, the guitarist and singer, also runs his own record label, Discord Records, that put out many, many records by bands from the DC area. And uh, the house that runs his record label is actually like an archive and museum of, of just so much stuff. And um, I went over there and he showed me a lot of the actual physical uh, records that they used to create this archive. This is the uh, uh, tour list from 1992 where they tracked every show and how much money they made. Um, and when I started talking to him about some of the stuff I wanted to do with it, I was really interested in the money they raised for the uh, various causes of the beneficiaries. And I was wondering, hey, could I just take the door price, multiply it by the attendance, and maybe like take off 20% to pay for the sound guy and other incidentals? Like, is that a fair calculation to do? And Ian's like, I don't know, let's, let me take a look. And just opened a drawer and pulled out this piece of paper, a uh, homeless show from 1988, uh, raising, or benefit for a homeless organization. From 1988, almost $4,000 came in the door, minus money for sound rental, et cetera, et cetera. I uh, still donated $3,441 to the beneficiary. So yeah, 15, 20% seems to be a fair amount to take off. So it validated this quick back of the envelope kind of calculation so I can start visualizing the data. Okay, so let's dive into the project. So uh, I'm envisioning this as a print, uh, large format piece. Um, so a lot of the stuff that's in this archive, there's flyers and photos and stuff like that. There's an era of analog, of uh, ephemera, of just of fanzines, um, you know, stuff on paper that people shared with each other. So that's what I want to make is a fanzine um, of, uh, you know, the, visualizing the data behind this band. Um, so each of these is going to be a two-page spread. This is visualizing the, uh, uh, all the shows they've ever played uh, internationally, threading together all their shows by tour routes, you know, from where they went from one town to the next town to the next town to the next town, and then breaking out just the counts by country and then by each U.S. state here in simple bar charts on the side. Um, they did hit up every single 50 U.S. states. Actually, uh, Ian told me the state they got to last was New Hampshire. They didn't make it to New Hampshire until 1998 because they were not able to play an all-ages show in New Hampshire until that time, and they wouldn't play there unless they could make sure anyone could attend. Um, and a little bit of labeling just to give some geographic context. I want to keep it really simple and impactful in this big two-page spread. And then the next one, uh, diving into just DC, looking at the venues they played the most. So um, these marks, um, oh yeah, so in, when they played their hometown of DC, they played conventional uh, rock clubs very, very rarely. So the you know, purple is the rock clubs. Um, most of the time they played either outdoor spaces or they played uh, churches or community centers, which were often benefit shows. So um, these are visualized as these sort of kind of flagpoles that uh, you know, the height is showing how many shows they played. They played more shows at Fort Reno, uh, which is an outdoor uh, space that hosts summer concerts. And they still are, are hosting summer concerts there every year. Um, I got to play there once uh, with my, my college band. And um, 
I try to add a little bit of context for what, what's happening to these spaces now. So a lot of the clubs they used to play in the 80s and 90s, the old 930 Club's now a J. Crew, DC Space now a Starbucks, Citadel Center was a skinny rink, now it's a Harris Theater. This is the re reality of what's, what DC's like these days. Um, and uh, yeah, so a lot of these shows you saw in pink here, the, the church uh, and community space shows, those were all benefit shows. They were ra raising money for causes. Um, so I was really curious, like, who, who were the beneficiaries? What were the causes that the, you know, the consciousness of the, of the punk scene was at in the 80s and the 90s into the early 2000s? Uh, this is one of my favorite flyers I found in the archive. Uh, this is a, a protest show they played in front of the Supreme Court in 1992. This feels like something I could see wheat pasted around DC. It feels relevant for today still. Um, so uh, this is visualizing all the money that they raised uh, for various causes. I, I categorize these, you know, it seemed by groups that seem to kind of make sense. I had two different versions. This is um, uh, the total for each charity, but I also tried breaking it out by individual shows. And by doing it that way, um, I could start adding some annotation. So they ended up doing like eight shows for Washington Free Clinic. They did a lot of support for that organization. Um, but the annotation is interesting because you can add little tidbits like this, like the most money they raised at one show was Rock for Choice, and that's because Pearl Jam played the show, so it was like a ton of people there. And the asterisk to note shows that were uh, uh, put on by Positive Force, so long-standing activist uh, show booking you know, uh, organization, also organized all these outdoor protest shows that they played. Um, this, I think, is my favorite one. This is the bands that they played with the most. Uh, so what we're seeing here is bands they played with at least five times, and so it's a timeline. 1988 to 2002, and you know the bubbles are the years that they played uh, um, shows with that band, and all the bands in blue are their label mates on Discord Records. But a lot of those uh, bills were shared, you know, across bands. Um, so, for example, you know they probably did a tour with both Dub Narcotic and the Warmers in 1994. So I really wanted to show the connections across this community of bands with this arc diagram across the bottom. And I kind of got a little out of, I, I, things got a little out of hand for the next visualization where I went to a new data set, bandtoband.com, which is sort of like the Kevin Bacon game for bands, you know, uh, six degrees of separation. You know, this person played in this band and they uh, then, you know, that band broke up, they went, they went on to join another band. And so starting from the four members of Fugazi, going one degree out from there, what bands did they play? In. And then uh, what members of those bands did they go on to play? And I, I was I went about four degrees out on this visualization, which again is like a 24-inch, two-page spread. Uh, but I was able to find a lot of uh, fun, uh, uh, you know, things in here. So, for example, by the third degree out, you get from uh, on second degree, you get from King Crimson over to Ringo Starr and his band, which allows us for the fourth degree out to get to the Beatles and Bruce Springsteen. Elvis Costello, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it was really exciting to me to see all these like major acts on the same level ring as some current DC bands that are my age and my peers, my friends, Flasher and Ghosh are just like people my age that I hang out with and uh, they're part of the same community of bands. And each of these rings, um, you know, I was only able to visualize a fraction. As you can imagine, it increases exponentially each step you get out. So on this ring here, there's easily uh, at least 138 more bands here, more than 1,000 more bands here, more than 5,000 more bands here. This is only based on what's in the band2band.com data set. So it's authoritative, but not exhaustive. So there might be more bands even in each of these rings. And I'm probably out of time. Um, so I'll be posting it here in a few weeks after I present it to the uh, at Micah, and you can follow me online. Uh, thanks for your time.